pounders, we are back doing what we do best, and that is drafting any amount of money for underdog fantasy best ball. And joining me tonight is Bradley. Welcome, my dude. Thanks for having me. Uh, we've been chatting a lot over the last couple months in the private DMs, but it's now great to be jumping into a draft tonight with you. Yeah, finally getting it done. And what more exciting time on underdog when you can pick whatever tournament you want to do. And like this year, this time last year, there wasn't a whole lot to choose from. So I was just smashing cash game after cash game to get those drafts in to get that fix. But now, like, look at the amount of tournaments that we have available. Best Ball Mania, which I'm really not touching right now until we get some news, right? If I get positive or negative news that I feel gives me an advantage, sure, I'll jump in. Like, if someone's ADP is going to change by two rounds, and I know that, maybe I scoop them around early and I gain that 12-pick 12, that 12 pick ADP, like, value right but it takes a little bit of projections to do that as well um so i think that's where you would absolutely smash in this now you're in a state that doesn't let you play on underdog uh michigan is giving us some some difficulties underdog has i've talked with the underdog people they've said hey we've done our part we put it you know back to the state of michigan and we're just waiting right now so crazy so crazy. You, your fingers are probably so ready to just start smashing some picks but you can play on going D- to ohio here very soon so interesting so yeah, you're we'll gonna just load up on on slows <laughs> probably probably <laughs> gross so so gross but we have the poodles too minus ev minus ev <laughs> uh, they could be they could be. in some cases i think they're actually okay but don't sign up. You'd be surprised. Did you, don't sign up. Did you for see uh, TJ Hernandez tweet? Yes, I did. Can you remind me what it said though? Yeah. So I, TJ Hernandez of four for four sent a tweet out and he said 89% of the drafts that made it of the underdog BBM three drafts that made mm-hmm. it to the final round were slow draft were fast drafts. Yeah. So only I 11% it. were I believe slow it. drafts. You want to know what I, and I think that might have to do with in slow drafts, less values seem to fall because people have more time to think about it. Like people don't let players fall as much like 19, 20 picks, which you'll see in fast drafts. We will. And uh, people aren't as good as balancing their roster on the go when you only have 30 seconds to pick. So I think that's also another little edge if you're able to do that quickly and efficiently. But look at these tournaments we have. We have Best Ball Mania, the Poodle 2, which is a 20 max, $7 entry. In first place is 60K. This is twice as big as the first Poodle, which I only ended up doing 13 of, which is fine. I don't feel the need to max these anymore because they're giving us so much just opportunities in different drafts. We did a Chow Chow earlier. It's a $50 entry, 15 max. I'll probably just be sending two just because of the entries. Entrance, it's 5,500 max. So I don't feel the need to even do like you know, 10. I think that'd be ridiculous. Um, 50K to first. And we jumped in Mason stream, stream sniping. And let's pull up the squad. We, and I showed you this earlier off air. We got screwed. We had Chase in the two spot. We get T Higgins. And you got to think like in a smarter draft, people will stay in their lane, $50, $50 entry. So I was willing to do this start. Bring back with Ramondre. And QBs, another sign was QBs were falling. Josh mm. Allen went to 25. Jalen Hurts went to 27, which is, you know, I, I think that's the range they should be in. But in this room, you would think, okay, Joe Burrow will make it back. Well, the team that selects Lamar Jackson at 28 scoops Burrow at 45 right before us. So we had to zig and zag. Um, and we'll, uh, I think it's easier to just look at it this way. We ended up with Herbert and Anthony Richardson. Richardson, six picks after. And then we went zero tight end, basically. So usually you have to be weak in one spot, and you don't want to be like completely weak, right? You still want some upside in that position. So we ended up getting Chiggy, 11 picks after ADP, Gerald Everett for the correlation, and then Juwan Johnson, 11 picks after ADP. This is a group that, I'm okay with this is the position that I was the weakest in in this draft. 
So I, I was fine with this crew. Half point PPR. You have some upside. You have some correlation. You have some touchdown upside with Jawan Johnson, who's starting to fall a little bit. You have the addition of Morrow. You have Hill there. So it is a little muddy at tight end, but I mean, Hill is basically a running back at this point, right? <laughs> it's true. It's true. Stevenson, AJ Dillon, Penny, Elijah Mitchell, Gus Edwards, and Israel Abanaconda for running backs. I mean, we have the news that Brees Hall's like not practicing just yet, and he has time, 104 days till kickoff. Who's counting? Um, but Israel Abanaconda is the type of guy that doesn't need a lot of carries to make a big impact. So I think he's an interesting, interesting late round. He's the last guy, he's last round waiver, right? Round 18. I like him. I like Michael Carter super late. He's Michael Carter mm-hmm. sometimes going undrafted in places. Zonovan Knight going undrafted in places. Mm-hmm. I think at this point, you're just rotating through those last round New York Jets running backs and, and seeing who can Definitely. hit, especially if you're not hitting. If you're going like anchor running back or zero running back, just take your shots on a guy who might be able to produce for you in the first couple weeks. Right. If you're projecting Dalvin Cook to move on, which I think a lot of people are at this point. Um Ty Chandler or Dwayne McBride are two flyers, but you, I like I like what you said is you're pairing these last round flyers with the team that has certain roles though. That's how you increase your upside, right? Because if you're just taking three of these guys at the end, the chance is all three smash. You know, in round 15, 16, 17, or 16, 17, 18, it's just so low. So you want to pair them with the right team to create that super team. I think that's very smart. And then the wide receivers, Chase Higgins, Keen Allen, Tony Burks, Alec Pierce, Tyquan Thor, and I think the group's fine. But that was our that was our chow chow. That was our chow chow. Now for the real talk. Everyone wants to know, DJ Moore, and you're an expert at giving projections. And for this offense in Chicago, is there a way that Justin Fields can get to 3,500 passing yards this season? Uh, well, I, I haven't projected if he plays 17 games, I have him at 35, 11. So I think he can get there if he plays all 17, if things, and that's like a median, you know, Mm -hmm. assuming he's 17 games, if he plays 15, probably not going to get there. Uh, but I have him at 20 touchdowns projected 17 interceptions. I still think that that's going to be a a tough thing to get to. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I wonder if he's going to make the jump that we need to see from him, you know, f- to unlock DJ Moore. Unfortunately, right. we didn't right. see that year one because uh, oh, Matt Nagy was the yeah. was the coach, and he, yeah, yeah. so we, yeah, we give them so we bad. give him that year off. But then last year, Eberflus didn't let him do anything. Especially, yeah. you know, the first yeah. half of the season, there were games where he was throwing fewer than 20 passes. And they like, were behind. They were playing from behind and they were running the ball. They'd be down that, 17. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the median rush gross. share for Justin Fields last year was 31%. 31% of the rushes are done by your second year quarterback who, yeah, like we, we like, but, and that's nice for fantasy, but. It's, you know, it's he, we need to see him step up as a passer and maybe DJ Moore is that extra piece, but mm-hmm. the pass volume, even if we bump it up 20%, which is about what I have it bump it okay. up 20% from last year, mm-hmm. it's still 460 pass attempts. And like DJ Moore, I still have at a 27% target share, but that only gets him to less than 130 targets. Right. So my question is we have, DJ Moore, you have Justin Fields at 3,500 yards, 25% target share of 3,500 yards. I mean, you're, you're looking at 875 if we just go based on the yards. If he gets 25% right. of the yards. Now, Mooney's still there, still a little banged up from last season. You have Komet, you have Claypool. It should still be a run-first offense. Yes. I think what the most sexy uh, part of DJ Moore is probably his – playoff schedule like that's where we're looking at that single game ceiling the right. price point still seems expensive is is there a way that he gets a higher than 25 percent target share i'm curious what you have 
have him, I have at. him at 27 percent mm-hmm. uh 59 percent catch rate so 76 catches 1073 yards and between four and five touchdowns is about where okay. i would expect him because we saw Komet take a step forward as a red zone end zone threat last year. Big time. He, Big time. he didn't catch any touchdowns that first year, you know, two years mm-hmm. ago under Matt Nagy, and then he catches a bunch. They so had two Cole games Komet, of two touchdowns. I you believe, know, we so. saw some spike weeks, but that was also, you know, Darnell Mooney was out for a bit and they were leaning on the likes of Equinemius St. Brown, you know, and, and Dante was- Pettis. Okay, right, the, right. The, these and these are players who are still on the team right now. So DJ Moore is definitely head and shoulders above those guys. But mm-hmm. it's a wonder of how is Chase Claypool going to take a step forward? Because remember, he was injured as well during the season. Yeah. And Darnell Mooney is that's actually a sneaky, uh, sneaky fade. Darnell Mooney, because uh, he came out and said he is not ready right now. Right. And I don't think I think a lot of people assume that he's just going to be ready for week one. And I'm mm-hmm. I'm not 100 percent certain that is the case. Like you have Jacoby Myers, what, two spots ahead of Darno Mooney, Zay Flowers mm-hmm. right behind him. Give me those right. two guys smash almost all the time over Darno Mooney. Well, Zay Flowers is way he's he's pumped up on underdog. He's at 88 on underdog. Oh, Zay Jones. I'm sorry. Zay Jones. Zay- yeah, yeah. So with that news with Mooney, I fully expect him that he has to fall until we get positive news. How far are you willing to put him down in this list? You Are you willing to uh, go behind Gallup? Because we got some crazy news on Gallup today that, I mean, not crazy news, but every time he gets positive press, you know what it does to these rankings. <laughs> he gallops forward, you know. <laughs> yeah, big time. I couldn't help myself. Like a horse. Like uh, a horse. <laughs> I think uh, Adam Thielen is too high in this list. Romeo Dubs is too Agreed. high in this list. Agreed. Mingo, um, maybe Rasheed Rice. We'll see. I mm-hmm. uh, the week seventeen correlation. You know, in the we know how those first and second round receivers tend to spike a little bit more in the second half. Right, that might right. be of of interest. But I think Dubs is too high. Thielen's too high. I think Gallup. Nico Collins needs to be higher. Okay. Uh, Even he, with the news that Mechie's on track. Yeah, I think you know Nico Collins. Worst case, he's a wide receiver too on a team that needs to throw the ball. True. Yep. You got the addition of Schultz there. I'm just curious about a touchdown. He was about wide receiver Nico. 36 or so in PFF receiving grade and yards per route run. Yeah. So this is a guy who's you know pretty good, but it, maybe un, a I, bit undervalued. I think he's fine in this spot. I'm pro- I'm bumping. I agree. I'm bumping Nico above Thielen and Dobbs, but I'm also pushing Gallup above Nico Collins. Um, yeah, Gallup was the worst PFF graded wide receiver last year, but he was coming back off the ACL and expected. You know, expected. We do expect that, but we also know that Dallas likes to run out their players a little early. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, no pressure, no pressure from Jerry. <laughs> uh, I think it's interesting that they lose Schultz, who is a clear red zone target, especially at the end of the season, popping off with two games with multiple touchdowns, including one in the playoffs. Uh, he's no longer there. Someone does have to pick up that red zone role. And it, is it going to be like Jake Ferguson? Is it going to be Hendershot? Who, like, I think Gallup's going to step up in the red zone, and I think he has probably the the best price for his for the season that I'm expecting him to have but it's going to depend on if he could stay healthy as well but yeah let's jump into let's jump into a draft we're going to do the poodle sweet i haven't which i haven't uh maxed out yet 20 max entry i will probably do the rest in slows if i don't get to fill it the first poodle we did 13 but again like i feel no pressure no look how fast we filled that let's go I really don't feel any pressure because underdogs are just going to keep releasing these tournaments um, the second they fill. Sleepy Joe Biden. All right. <laughs> we got ER7 here, batch nine, TYs, Farachi. Joe Biden's here. He'll probably be auto drafting by round four. Uh, Josh TX. So we got some pounders here. Love that. Love that. And we're pick 11. So. <laughs> <laughs> Mooney's done. Love Stars is already calling his shots. Mooney's <laughs> done, he says. Bry H, welcome to the live stream. Meta 42. T Wise and Larry 
always here <laughs> saying smash that like button drop a sub if you're not already sub to the channel hit the bell for notifications so you can jump in these live drafts with us and give bradley some love on the youtube machine at best bell fantasy and at bradley Stelbler at on twitter right so it's F. all F. in the description it's yeah. in the description let's go F. make sure you're subbing here because there's some great content, great conversations that come out of this channel. So make sure y'all are hitting that smashing the red subscribe button. This is sure. the low key drafters channel. This is where the sickos come. Like they go to the bigger streamers for the entertainment, then they come here for the good stuff. You know, <laughs> they stay. They stay for the talks about. I mean, it, it gets dirty. It does get dirty in here. Well, in the pre-show to... meeting, in the pre-show meeting, we were talking about Cooper Cup versus Tyreek Hill versus Jamar Chase at, mm -hmm. and even who's the wide receiver one. So, how strong is Chase as a wide receiver? The wide receiver two here. Like, are you if you have the second pick, it. are you taking Chase it. every time, every time, every time? I want my exposure to Justin Jefferson to still be around that six percent plus range. But I'm selecting Chase at one just because of what we spoke about, a more condensed offense in Cincy. You have the Week 17 cake matchup, which Minnesota has a great playoff schedule. So, yeah, But do. you have the addition of Addison. You have Hawkinson, who, yeah. I mean, we saw. He did, he did make an impact right when he came to the team. The first game, he had like seven catches on seven targets. So that's enough for me to just make that small bump up for Chase. But I both. like Minnesota's pass volume, though, this year. I think that Kirk Cousins will flirt with almost 700 pass attempts. And look, you're looking at possibly four guys who are getting 100 targets. You know, Hawkinson, Addison, Easily. Uh, Jefferson. Jefferson might even get 200 targets this year. And then, <sighs> oh, who's the KJ Osborne? KJ Osborne would maybe. Jefferson's going to get his no matter what. I, I think that's. that's it's just what has to happen. He's too skilled. We're on the clock here. We have the news that Eckler did rework his his contract. I think that makes him a great value. Yeah. But and we could basically just get any of these three receivers on the way back. I'm happy with that for sure. Yeah. Come back around, get get a receiver. It's tough to start these double RBs. It's it's really it puts you in a bad situation at 35 38. Well, and the Karain draft last year, I think has thrown everyone off. Like I love it. I I love that. Because he won it won the million dollars or whatever with or the 2 million dollars with yeah. He won the 2 mil with double running backs and that's definitely not like the most optimal <laughs> Oh, but how good is it though? Because people are always trying to play catch up on what worked last year instead of right. looking forward. I think that's a big problem with even data that gets spread out on the Twitter machine without sort of reference to how it should be applied for the next season. So are you um, taking Adams here? Or are you taking like Amon Ra or Jalen Waddle? I'm fine with going Adams with here. The news it of is... Jimmy Garoppolo's foot injury. Yeah, I, I I think it's okay still. I think it's okay. Amon okay. Ra, I, I like his ADP, but again, you're, we're expecting J-Mo back for the end of the season mm. or week seven on. Like, But Amon Ra in, half point, in full point PPR, like I'm going over Adams for sure. We'll see. We, we also had a, like, a little tweakage from Aaron Rodgers. Did he go back on the field after that? No, but he just hung out. Right calf. Yeah, so that's that's nothing too much to worry Considered about. Considered minor, I I don't worry about those types of things, you know, at this point. But yeah, but yeah, you know, this, who am I? The Green Bay Packers jerseys behind me, you know, like <laughs> is that a is that a Tunyon jersey? It is a Robert Tunyon signed jersey. Let's go. One of one, one <laughs> of one. He but won yeah, I think a Eckler... lot of money a couple of years ago. Let me tell you. Okay, fair, fair. Huge touchdown game <laughs> for just a year. Eckler Adams should be just a slightly different, uh, especially for the puppies where we've had the news about Eckler a little longer. Now, Eckler was a common faller on the big board going to 17, 18, when there was unknown about his landing spot and the, just the contract talks uh, did that. But now where we have a little more news for this tournament that will fill relatively quickly, uh, probably four or five days total, I think that 
Eckler Adams I mean, will what, be this slightly only a couple days ago. Right. It'll be slightly less owned. That's mm-hmm. another little little nug why I would do Adams here. But in the BBM or something, you kind of if you have a Monra ahead of Adams in your rankings, like I'm completely fine with that because Eckler's fallen in BBM, which has been open for you know since the NFL draft. So we see Nick Chubbs moving here in the 19th spot, followed by Tony Pollard. No elite QBs yet to go off the board. Chase and this T. is a Higgins. patient room. Patient room. Very. See batch nine start double RB here. Olave off the board at 18. He's probably hoping Mahomes comes back to him there. And I would be surprised if Mahomes comes back all the way to round uh, the 31. Travis Kelsey dra- Yeah, at what, 107? That would be that'd be a very early Christmas gift. And there he nope. goes. Nope. <laughs> 24. It's <laughs> Jefferson s- and Mahomes. He <laughs> spoke him into existence. <laughs> What's the write up on hasn't signed tag? I'm not worried about Josh Jacobs. He's, I think the Le'Veon Bell thing is just, it might be a little <laughs> Always over. Hanging over your head. <laughs> it might be a little overplayed, but it's still there, you know? Le'Veon Bell, really? Oh, he went double elite. I hate it. Wow. I hate it. <laughs> no stack, even, just. Even in BBM, <laughs> were, were those two auto picks? I wasn't fully paying attention. I'm looking at the board and other I don't stuff. I think so. Even Yikes. in BBM where they're paying out the regular season prize, mm-hmm. right? And this isn't doing that. It's still, it's so bad. It's so, so bad. If you go to elite QB, just take a shot on, even you can go Watson or like Lawrence if he falls. I'm, I'm like, go Hurts. That. Just, just go Hurts. If you're going like elite quarterback, just go Hurts by himself. Oh, I agree with that too. <laughs> I think Mahomes, you can go here too, just because he spreads the ball. We see how many weapons they have, and like not one guy is like, oh, that's him besides Kelsey. Um, so I don't, I'm not too worried about naked Mahomes. And you can pair him up later because his receivers are going like in good spots. Like Tony's getting expensive, but uh, Sky Moore, I, what's what's your thoughts on Sky Moore this season? Uh, I, I, wanted him to hit. I wanted him to hit last year and now I feel like I'm sitting on a lot of dynasty sky more just like just withering away and I don't have a lot of confidence in him because he's a smaller receiver who didn't do much his rookie year and there really wasn't strong target competition who are we talking about Marquez Valdez mm-hmm. Scantling a hurt mm-hmm. Kadarius Tony right no like one Juju Smith Schuster who yeah he had a couple spike weeks but was really Juju Smith-Schuster keeping the second round rookie who was considered by many a bulletproof prospect, you know, in the second round off the field. I, I, I'm really worried about Sky Moore. So maybe that's the reason Tobias as well stepping in, but I, I don't have, especially given all the other wide receivers that they went out, like they drafted Rasheed Rice in the second Mm -hmm. round. They signed Justin Ross and John Ross. Like the the Chiefs have been trying to hit on these big time wide receivers. And so I think those are indications that Sky Moore, there's just Mm -hmm. not confidence from the organization that Sky Moore is the guy. I agree. And they add another second round receiver in Rice. So it kind of confirms let's I want both of these guys. And I think selecting Lamar gives us the better chance of doing that. We'll see. I think so too. I think so too. Yeah. He gone. Oh, no, nope. I'm okay with the naked Lamar right now because we could always pair him up later and you don't need to. And then you can probably get Zay flowers and Beckham and mm-hmm. Bateman, like pick two, you know, in that right. spot. I'm Judy over any of the guys in this range. Uh, Judy or Hopkins, I'm cool okay. with. Yeah, Judy's fine. And Denver has the Chargers, so we'll go with the Week 17 correlation here. Oh, I love it. Let's go. We'll make that. We'll make that little coin flip. Nice. Baltimore has Miami, so we're we're pretty much out on that game stack unless we want to do like an A chain later. <laughs> 
I mean, throw him in or later. Chosen Anderson, last round pick. <laughs> Gross. We're digging deep. We're digging deep early. <laughs> uh, actually, a real late flyer want to consider at wide receiver is Braxton Berrios. Okay. Even in half point, half point PPR. Even in half point. All right. Yeah, that's a guy who commands uh, in a short amount of time a lot of targets, and the mm-hmm. slot job is up for grabs. Mike Kosicki is gone. Uh, it's Hill and Waddle and who else? Right. That's, they it's went a out very and signed Braxton offense. Berrios from the New York Jets. You know, so I like Braxton Berrios as a very late round pick. What's his ADP yeah, right now? It's he's undrafted. Yeah, he's exactly. Un, he's it makes undrafted. you unique as well. Yeah, yeah. Two fifteen. Beautiful. Sure. I sent Berrios. Uh, man, was this uh, three years ago at this point? Two years ago, he had a two or three touchdown game against. Was it Tampa Bay? Oh. I I forget the team it was against, but I made a spot start in the championship, and still <laughs> lost. <laughs> with with Berrios doing that, I'm like, there's no way. All my skill position players just did nothing. <laughs> Uh, Call me the the Barrio Stan, you know. You can be. You that can be that can be your uh, your spotlight. Maybe the show. maybe. I mean, he's like a super bursty guy. He was 87th percentile agility score. Um, mm-hmm. And even looking at like the last couple years, you mentioned like he's had a couple spike weeks. Not much last year, you know, in 2022 because of the addition of Garrett Wilson and Corey Davis and all that. But 2021, right. and, and Zach Wilson. <laughs> Look, Lord have mercy. Uh, <laughs> I hope he, Busted I hope Zach bust. Wilson hasn't uh, ruined Elijah more, but Barrios like has seven target games, 11 target games, 10 target games, 12 mm-hmm. target games. You mentioned the two touchdown or it was a one touchdown game, but he had eight receptions for 65 yards. Okay. Okay. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> it's, enormous. it's enormous. But then even the year before that in 2020, he had, uh, a 15 point PPR game and a 17.9 PPR point game. Like, yeah, he has some spike week history. So, yeah, it's a flyer, right? 18th yeah. round. Sure. And what do you have to no lose? No one else has him. And maybe Waddle gets hurt. Maybe Hill gets hurt. And he has a slightly, slightly larger role for the end of the season. Like, you never, you never know. Um, there's, I made a pick in, it was it was the last the last poodle, and we went with you know we had, we had Daniel Jones. I had no correlation with Giants. Everyone got sniped earlier, beyond where I was comfortable taking them, and I went with the narrative in my head that Waller gets injured. We're going to a last round Danny Bellinger. Oh, let's go. No one's gonna have him. He's undrafted. I think it's interesting for those tournaments that fill quick, and less people are apt to kind of scroll down the faster the tournament fills. I like that pick. I also like, uh, you know, if you got Lamar Jackson, maybe you, you missed out on Andrews, but Isaiah likely mm-hmm. is going as your tight end 28. And mm-hmm. I like that as you know your pivot here. If you want to do like your late round tight end. And is that the narrative that you know, Mark Andrews gets hurt? Or do you think that he'll have a role even with the addition of like, say flowers and Odell? Well, Isaiah likely three of his five games last year where he had five or more targets, three of five were with Andrews in the lineup. So mm, okay. I think he still has some some sneaky value. He had 60 targets, um, but if he is the tight end handcuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely. And he oh, was definitely. the PFF graded tight end to each of the last two seasons when he was in college. Mm. So I, yeah. I mean... What do you have to lose when you're in those seventeenth round stack? Exactly, you know? I agree. I definitely agree with that. And again, those are probably guys that you're adding just to like a third, like a third tight end, right? You're yes. not going Danny Bellinger as your second tight end on a uh, on a guess. That would be spicy. <laughs> so that would be a spicy take. And F42 says, "Don't like Mahomes and Allen, but I did manage one BBM four team where Allen dropped back to a second round pick thirty. Yeah, it's beautiful." Fancy football garage. What's up, my man? How about Higgins on Miami for a sleeper? Listed as wide receiver, but probably be moved to tight end based on reports. Yeah, Elijah we'll Higgins. Just, we just added. Smythe is a blocking yeah. tight end, mostly in line. Yeah. Uh, but Elijah Higgins, these, these transition guys usually don't hit year one. Mm-hmm. So maybe a dynasty listed. stash. 
if he was listed as a tight end here, maybe I would I'd like just sprinkle him where I wanted a little bit of correlation to get different. But as a receiver, it's not as sexy because he needs to have a bigger game to really make an impact versus at the tight end position. Did you hear that, Elijah Higgins? You need to be sexier. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Kyle Pitts not practicing yet is a little concerning for the Kyle Pitts truthers. Yeah, let him continue to fall. Like he, I mm. viewed him as one of the most overrated players last year, and boy, did that hit. You know, like yeah. Yeah. we just have concerns about him accessing legitimate upside in this Atlanta offense. If they're going to run sixty percent of the time, good luck getting a pie big enough to sustain Drake yeah. London. Yeah, and Pitts. Pitts. And now Pitts, you know, Pitts doesn't Robinson. have to do his. He doesn't have to do as much as London to pay out because of the onesie position scores less at tight end. But I 100% agree. This team isn't going to run less when they add B. John Robinson to the offense. <laughs> I'm cool with going Ayuk here. I think there's a tier drop off. Um, you could add Mike Evans in that tier, I suppose, but a little I younger. like Dobbins here too, if there's mm-hmm. the Baltimore correlation. But I agree. <laughs> If we go Dobbins, I'm cool with getting either Ayuk or Evans. I guess you could add Lockett in there too. I'm cool with any of we'll those. Go your route. We'll go your route. We'll see how it works out. <laughs> but I, I like J.K. Dobbins as a like Nick Chubb light. Mm-hmm. Just an efficient runner, doesn't catch mm-hmm. a lot of passes. But if we're if your narrative is Lamar Jackson is not going to run as much. That means it is going to be J.K. Dobbins who's running, right? And we like to hear that. A hundred percent. But when you have Lamar Jackson on your team, you want him running. <laughs> Fair. Damn it! <laughs> Sorry. Damn it! Wrong narrative, Brad. Wrong narrative, dude. <laughs> nah, I, I agree. I, J.K. Dobbins at pick fifty-seven just feels so good. He's one of my players that I have starred in this mm, range. Yes. Um. Uh, like a hundred percent. And when you add Lamar Jackson to that and you have a pass catching running back, I think it makes a lot of sense to go Dobbins here. I like the Mike Evans pick there as well. It, this pick for me is I'm hoping he you just rotate through spike weeks. Like honestly, yeah. it's just a rotation through spike weeks. It, we've seen his single game ceiling. It's insane, but does it go down with Baker Mayfield or does he get traded? And now everyone wishes that they had, uh, more Mike Evans basically is what it would amount to. It'd be a full on panic of getting your Mike Evans shares. Yeah. I, I don't envision Mike Evans getting traded, but maybe it's Kyle Trask instead of Baker Mayfield. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll see. Mm-hmm. I don't know how much of an upgrade. So the thing is like the, the bucks could be <sighs> really bad this year. That's what I'm expecting, and I'd rather have Mike Evans over Godwin just in mm. half-point PPR where touchdowns matter so much more. Um, he has, I think, a better chance to have those spike weeks. He has a higher single-game ceiling spike potential, and he goes after him. So if I'm going to select one of their receivers, it's going to be Evans. If I'm going to select anyone on the offense, it's probably going to be White at his ADP. Okay, we'll pivot here, but we see them both on the board. If you have to pick between the Pittsburgh wide receivers, Pickens mm. and Deontay Johnson, who are you going mm. with? It, you know, it really depends on my roster construction. Like if I have three wide receivers, I'm probably going Pickens for the spike potential. I'm sorry. If I have three wide receivers, I'll go Deontay Johnson because for the floor. If I have four wide receivers at this point, I'm probably going Pickens if I'm selecting a receiver. Because I think Pickens has a better chance to have those single game spike weeks to actually get put into your lineup. Where down to Johnson's more of that floor guy is going to be the target, the target hog, and it, it it's tough. I think really the biggest benefactor on Pittsburgh is Kenny Pickett. When you add Darnell Washington, another red zone threat, you have Deonta Johnson. I mean, I, I'm expecting Najee to have a better season this year as well when they shore up the O line. It's just how much, how much honey's left in the pot for Deontay Johnson in the red zone. Yeah, we expect he'll, he won't score zero touchdowns anymore. So true, <laughs> true. Can't get can't get any lower than zero. 
That's uh, true. I agree with you that Pickens has the higher ceiling, but he also last year showed a, a nice floor. I my best bell value rating had him at wide receiver thirty last year, um, mm-hmm. and that was ahead of Zay Jones, ahead of Michael Pittman, and ahead of Brandon Ayuk, ahead of Chris Godwin. Mm-hmm. So this is a guy who, yeah, he wasn't getting you like top five weeks, but he was getting you like top 24, top 18 right. weeks. And that's okay. No doubt. I But Zay Jones was also going in the 18th round. So it's in Pickens. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's difficult. That offense is going to be, it's going to be diff- difficult to kind of pick out, but that's the way I'm approaching it is if I have four receivers, I'm not going to add Deontay Johnson to that squad because I just view him as, you know, he's a floor type slot receiver that will have less opportunities to actually spike into that lineup. Especially if you have four receivers at that point, you should have some elite guys on your squad. Right. Uh, I'm cool with going. <sighs> I want white, <laughs> but I, I think I'm, I'm cool with doing this basically. We bring in a little more Tampa Bay correlation. We're already oh. making a bet on that <laughs> offense. Sure, sure, yes. I know you don't. I know you don't love that. I like Connor. I like. I like Connor I love, over Madison. I love Connor. Yeah. Uh, we don't have a tight end, do we? I love Darren Waller at this point. I mm. love Waller as well. But it's. I, don't know. I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind getting a Joku if he fell five picks. But I think we go with the little correlation with with Lamar. Mm, yes, we can push off. Can push off tight end. Let's do it. I like this range. In this range, I typically want to be drafting either running backs or, like you said, like tight end, like Waller, or even QB. Like I, I'm fine with going Anthony Richardson. I'm fine with going Dak, who usually Cooks is in this range. Cooks is at 84 and a half now, so he is rising a little bit. Cooks Dak is a pretty easy double, and then you can get Gallup later. I think yes. that's really easy to stack. And now, then your tight ends really late too, right? Yeah, it's very, it's very nice. Just pivot QB basically. Um, not someone that you need Lamb, unlike Tua, who if Hill and Waddle are gone, and especially if they're on the same team, I like to try to push Tua as far as I can after ADP. Yes. It's because again, it's a condensed offense. Um, and how do you make a super team? It's going to be, you know, pushing them after ADP to get a little more unique and value. One of the commenters, uh, it's your boy, Pauly chips chiming in. <laughs> I can't tell if Mike Evans fell off or if Brady was just that bad last year. Why can't it be both? It was, why can't it, it be both? Was. Uh, because Brady set the NFL record for most pass attempts and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers scored the second fewest points in the NFL. So it it was bad, but Mike Evans, there were red flags going into last year. Mm -hmm. Evans was the only wide receiver in the top 24 who did not have a 20% target share. He had said Brady was spreading the ball though. Brady spreads (laughs) the ball, which is kind of annoying, right? So if this offense does condense, to Godwin and they play around Godwin and Mike Evans. I, I mean, I'm expecting Mike Evans to have a higher target share this year with Brady gone. Now those balls won't be as catchable, which might be a problem. So and does also it matter lower volume of passes too? So, <laughs> right, right. You, you have to take that into account. And that's where the Godwin argument comes up where Godwin, a lot of his targets were very catchable balls from Brady. Yes. Um, so it's it, it's worrisome for me. Godwin's outlook with uh with Baker. Well, he was also like, I mean, last year it was a struggle for Godwin because he was coming off the ACL tear the previous year, and yeah. we know how wide receivers bounce back from the first year yeah. of ACL tears. They're give just not themselves. Years. Yeah, give me two years. So that's another reason why we should be in more in on George Pickens. Fair. My, the worry about Pickens, I think what worries everybody is Pickett's inability to throw the ball accurately downfield, and then you pair that with the separation problem Pickens has, and he's just running go routes. and That's worrisome, but again, he's going to be the spike week type guy that you need if you have four receivers at that range. That's 
So I think uh, wraps that up pretty nicely. So let's see. What is the what is the for those who are just ch- just just joining us? What is the roster looking like right now? So we have Lamar Jackson. We did get a little snipey sniped on Mark Andrews, but it was expected. They both were after ADP. Eckler, Dobbins, and White. I think we're so like we're very strong at running back. We can really just sort of stack receivers and tight ends. The problem is this is a bad range to need receivers. Um, that's that's the problem. Like here, I wouldn't mind going double tight end in this range. I wouldn't mind honestly grabbing a second QB if we had one correlated, but I don't see it. Um, double tight end here is usually my go-to. I like to need is Russ, running backs. Has Russ gone off the board? We can wait Russ, a little bit on Russ. Russ goes down. He's like 130, 132. Oh, so I love it. we to get him on the way back around at 131. Good. Get these wide receivers off or QBs off the board. I would love wait for Josh to pick. He already has Waller seven picks after ADP, which feels good. Feels really good. Danny Dimes gets sniped before him. He's probably not very thrilled about that. I like this squad from Luss. Oh, hey, so I looked up uh, Kenny Pickett. PFF mm-hmm. uh, grades on deep passes 20 yards or further down the field out of uh, seven, uh, 83 quarterbacks who threw a pass last year. <laughs> yeah. Kenny yeah. Pickett was sixth in PFF grade. Okay. Deep passes. Wow. Ahead of Josh Allen, ahead of Kirk Cousins, ahead of Stafford, Prescott, and Herbert. How much of that has to do with how good Pickens' hands are? Uh, <laughs> that guy, that guy snatches snatches balls in tight spaces. <laughs> Fryermuth. Now here, I like I like running back mm. in tight end again. Yeah. Like Odell, I just can't click him in this in this range. Myers, I don't mind. Boyd, I don't mind. See, this is sort of is at. like the safest the safest tight end. Like if you want eight points and half PPR every week, he will give you that. He is going to be Mr. Consistency. He will now ne- almost never it just, bust for you. It just it's said just, I had six seconds on the clock and then auto and then auto. Oh no. <laughs> That's the most weird. All right. Well, what? we're going to be very close to done it running or yeah. Running back now. That's wild. <laughs> That's wild. underdog just got me good. <laughs> there must have been a there must have been a little lag delay. I agree though, Fryermuth. There does Darnell Washington worry you at all about Fryermuth's red zone production? Not this year, no. Not you think this he's year. He's just more going to be lineman type. I think yeah, he'll he'll learn how to block. I think he's one of those tight ends that in three years will be like, oh, we should have had him on our dynasty leagues. Oh man, right, he right. it's Fryermuth and. And, and Washington or Pittsburgh's going to have to make a decision on their mm-hmm. roster about Fryermuth or, or Washington. And I think that, you know, we're, we're going to see a crossroads there, but I, I've, I'll tell you what, a couple of years ago, I went to the fancy football expo and it was the year that Kyle Pitts was the rookie and, and Fryermuth was the consensus tight end two there. Yep. And I went, I went to the expo and, you know, I was just having a good old time watching drafts and interacting with, with some of the folks and go down to the store down in Canton, Ohio. And I'm checking out and this guy is just talking to the cashier next to me. And he's like, Oh yeah, the number one tight end in this class. Isn't Pat Fryer. Isn't uh, Kyle Pitts. It's Pat Fryermuth. Okay. I'm like, I'm like eyebrow uh, raise. I'm like, right. what, what, and he's like, I watched every game Fryermuth played in high school oh and college. Oh and he's God. like, this guy, he is the real deal. And I was like, I okay, well, had a smash season. I mean, <laughs> legendary thousand yard rookie season for a tight end. But Fryermuth didn't disappoint either. No, you know? he had a good year. He did. He had a, a very good year. good year. And so, I, you know, I don't want to ignore Fryermuth there. He's been very respectable mm-hmm. in that Pittsburgh offense. Mm-hmm. No, I, I agree. I think Fryermuth gives us the ability to stop at two tight ends too with Najoku. I, I'm Ooh. fine with that amount of like draft capital uh, and just 
sort of taking the leap of faith that maybe Njoku ends up as tight end five or six, which is always up for grabs every year. Um, and like you said, you have that weekly floor with Firemute. I think that's a pairing. That's like the latest pairing that I would stop at two tight ends. Now I strongly believe we have to go three, which is fine. And like, I don't hate Dalton Schultz in this area either. Like you mentioned your concern about Nico Collins, but let's say it isn't John Metchier or it isn't Nico Collins and they're both meh wide receivers. It's going to mm-hmm. be Dalton Schultz. Like Schultz yeah. has been a target gobbler over the last mm-hmm. two seasons. Why won't yeah. he target gobble with a rookie quarterback? And I think, I think he will. There's a really good chance for him to score, you know, six touchdowns, uh, in a pretty safe, safe way, five, six touchdowns. Just if, if he does that, I mean, he's paying out at 130, but he is starting to fall and he's starting to fall pretty quick. Chiggy's going to rise above him. Um, and where they're ranked back to back so closely, which one would you prefer, Chiggy or Schultz? Oh, because <laughs> you have like the it's upside guy, but you have Schultz who's proven that he can be a red zone factor and score multiple touchdowns. Uh, games in the red zone. Yeah, I think but uh, now it's a uh, rookie. I think I'm going to go with, I mean, both offenses are probably not going to be that good. Um, right. Let me right. go with the guy who could lead his team in targets and maybe it's Dalton Schultz. Okay. Cause it's not going to yeah, be Chigga I, I, I agree. And I think in the red zone, it's still going to be Derek Henry over there in Tennessee. So I completely agree with that. I see Khalil Herbert falling a little bit. And I still don't know how he has this ADP of 123. I feel like in every draft I'm in, Khalil Herbert's falling to this range of around 130. Um, it, it's a multiple head running back room over there. You have Sean Johnson, the rookie, who's probably the most exciting player, should have an impact on third down, just being like a pass blocker to start. But can he work out a role there? We'll see. I mean, Khalil Herbert's not like a true number one in my eyes. He's just too small. But we've seen number one overall weekly finishes for Khalil Herbert. That's the thing Mm -hmm. is like Mm -hmm. that spike potential. It's so he still has it. We can't afford to go running back anymore. (laughs) No, no. (laughs) We're we're done. We're done. Like we're done for a while. I like Mitchell. Why did you take Rashad White and Brian Robinson? Those are like the worst combination oh, yeah. of this is inefficient going, running backs <laughs> we're taking bets on bad offenses in this stream we're really we're really uh, shooting for the moon and next we're gonna go uh, cole Komet on a, oh, a run first God. offense <laughs> i'm just kidding uh, i'm You're i'm going alec pierce here <laughs> alec pierce, i don't i don't know what's what's wrong with this draft i'm just you know I'm, we're going with the speculative approach why aren't you going with russ wilson here uh, we can we can go with russ yeah, I, I'm just go. always, I'm always clicking Alec Pierce and I just need someone to remind me that there's other players there. Well, you stack draft. with Jerry Judy and you're all set. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. We can grab a late Mims too. Actually, oh, I love late, Mims. Late is now at 164 for Mims. Oh, no. <laughs> it's getting expensive when you still have Judy there. You still have Sutton. You have Tim Patrick <laughs> that should have a role in the red zone. Dude's pretty sure he's 6'4". Well, it's his so, first year coming back from ACL. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, but he did get hurt early into the off season too. Uh, late, I thought. What, Later, I thought. Uh, like July was it like around okay, July? So mid July. Still, still, it's gonna be his first year back. Yeah, and he's older. So Mims, basically, the outlook that I'm looking for for Mims is taking over that role by the yeah. mid season. But he's priced like. He's not free. You know, he's not like an 18th round guy anymore. 164 is is price it's, it's pricey. I mean, you're so expecting him to contribute a little bit to your team. You're not you can't afford to take a zero at that spot is the thing. Right. So like for Sheed Shahid goes two picks a pick earlier. Like I'll give, I'd I'd much rather Shahid. have Rashid. I'd rather have Van Jefferson. Oh, not Van. <laughs> Dude, there's just no one there to Really Give me Josh Downs if you're if you're reaching for potential. How about Wandell Robinson late? I mean, you mm-hmm. have the injury. Coming off the ACL, but... I am so out on Wandell this year. Next year, 2024. Yeah, give me Wandell, but not this year. How about for like drafting him 
on a team not where you need wide receiver points, right? Like we have five receivers nope. who still need to nope. draft players nope. of roles. <laughs> but if you're playing for end of the season and you have Daniel Jones, nope. are you stuck? <laughs> I can't. I nope. can't sell you. <laughs> Give me. You know, if you're if you're taking late stabs, like. Look, Sterling Shepard plays the same role. Jamison Crowder plays the same role. Paris Campbell plays oh, the same role. Of them. Like a it's a million slot receivers. Like, why don't you take if you want to stack Giants late, take Jalen Hyatt, take Darius Slayton. Those are the late Giants you want. I honestly think Waller can be the slant king over in New York this season if that dude can stay healthy and on the field. He can honestly end up as as tight end three, like in a sneaky, sneaky fashion. Oh, I think if Kelsey gets hurt, he could be the tight end one pretty easily. Ooh, mic drop. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I'm high on Waller. It's an offense that is dying, just crying for uh, a number one target, and that's – Really, what and you saw Dable what he could do with Daniel Jones. Jones set yeah. career highs in completion percentage, like career yeah. high in touchdown interception ratio. Uh, yeah. Turnover worthy plays were down. This like mm-hmm. Dable knows how to coach, and yep, yeah, he's going to pull the most from each player on that team. So, I, th- I think we could finish here with two QBs. I'm comfortable with just going Russ and Lamar. Yeah, you got the stacks there. There's no reason to take a third. I saw it. I did a best ball evaluation of a team uh, last week, and they drafted a third quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo, naked. Yeah, it's it's not great. It's not no. great. But if you want Jimmy Garoppolo the naked, there are other ways to. No, I'm just... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just go to his uh, his modeling his modeling deal, Travis Matthews uh, golf wear out of Cali. I... I'm Big sure fan. someone will hook you up. So, but is there a is there a way? And I'm just playing devil's advocate that Jimmy Garoppolo could throw a passing touchdown to Josh Jacobs, one to Adams or two to Adams, let's say, and one to Myers. <laughs> Four touchdowns might be that's aggressive. Let's stop at three: one to Myers, one to Adams, and one to Josh Jacobs as like a dump off. There's what I'm saying is the offense isn't as condensed as some. Well, they play the Colts, right? Week 17. They're playing the Colts. Mm -hmm. Colts are going to be running like crazy. You have to think that it's Jonathan Taylor plus Anthony Richardson. That means the pace of play is going to be slow. That means there's not going to be aggression probably from the Raiders at that point either. So I don't think that's going to be a very high scoring game. Like if I'm, if I'm projecting, you know, when we get to week 17, what that could look like, it could be, 21 17 like it could be really disappointing yeah. for fantasy dome game though dome game yeah. is that one in indy i think it is in indy sneaky dome game where's the kicker we'll draft the kicker right now uh you know who i'm looking at i'm just <laughs> we'll see if he falls to us yeah all possibly. right dolchich we'll get the double correlation here with russ yeah i'm fine with that and then coming back around, like I like tanking this range, but again, we need receivers. I think going a third Denver player might be too much. Like, well, we if have Judy, Dolchich, it, and Mims. And right. they, if this the team Denver Broncos, makes it to week 17, all three of those players aren't going to be in the finals. Like, they're not going to be in the, like the winning lineup. So I think that actually gets, it hurts you in a way. Yeah, I'm gonna go Shahid here. Now, it, there's two there's two ways to look at it. Maybe Mims has a low advance rate. Judy has, or let's do it the opposite. Let's say Mims has a great week 16 and Judy busts. Judy has a low advance rate, and now you're pushing Judy to week 17, where then he has a big game. But then for week 17, do we expect Judy? Do we expect Mims and Dolchish to all have, you know, all be in the winner's circle? I think that's extremely tough on an offense like Denver. Some offenses, sure, you might be able to get all three, but it's very slim, the amount of winning lineups. And this goes back to Battle Royales, where I did weeks one through 18 last year. 
it was very it happened twice that there was even a double stack in the winner's circle. So to say there's a triple, I, I think I think it actually yeah, I think yeah, holding off, a, especially because you mentioned how Denver is set up. You still have Tim Patrick there. You still have mm-hmm. you know, Cortland Sutton. And Lord knows if there are other, maybe it's KJ Hamler who comes on nowhere and is like oh. the guy. Yeah, like bring <laughs> everyone hilarious. to tears. <laughs> that would, that would bring everyone to tears from last year. You know what? Uh, I had no Sutton last year. I had very little Judy. Um, I was really on the Tim Patrick bandwagon. I had no Hamler. And after mm-hmm. Tim Patrick got hurt, it was like, damn. It's like, I have to draft Sutton now. Like, this feels gross. Oh, no, I have right. to draft Judy, which was fine. He did okay. But uh, Near yeah, the end of the was... season after Nathaniel Hackett was fired, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. True, true. Yeah, Judy was on our uh, Battle Royale winning lineup, so I, I can't hate Judy. I can't hate Russ. He, was, he wasn't going undrafted, obviously, um, because they're six-man – leagues that you're drafting in for battle royale and that was week 18 so no one no one was playing russ against the chargers but it was more like kind of like just projecting them to play the whole game because they had nothing to play for you know end off on a good note we'll see if mims comes back around maybe we'll slide him in i also like i really like uh who is Rondell Moore in this space. Mm -hmm. He's a target earner and you know, there's still rumblings that Deandre Hopkins might still get moved. And if that's the case, Holy buckets. Like I know Rondell has struggled to stay healthy, but like we're not projecting injuries tonight. (laughs) Or are we, or are we? (laughs) No, I Uh, I agree. He could be a a mega riser. Um, He'd rise right above these guys and, if you want to put him somewhere, I mean, I put him ahead of if DeAndre Hopkins gets traded, I'd move Rondell Moore up to like this Darnell range. Moody. No, even higher. Really? You're going yeah. way up. Wow. Mm-hmm. Even I think that's dependent on, on Kyler and Fair. how he's progressing. I'm but, not super aggressive on, you know, Kyler missing a ton of games. Like I think it's going to okay. be at about four. I think is mm-hmm. fine. And by that point, like it doesn't matter because Kyler Murray, okay. even if you take away four spike weeks or four games from his rate, he's still going to out spike week, like all but 10 quarterbacks, mm-hmm. which is why I love smashing Kyler Murray in, especially like these tournament style, like FFPC or DraftKings or wherever that has the tournament style. The season long, I'm steering clear of Kyler a little bit more. Interesting. Interesting. And that's a that's a tweet on uh, Marquise Brown. That's a low-key tweet on Marquise Brown right there. I mean, it'll be Marquise Brown getting like the, the lion's share, but your wide receiver mm-hmm. two is going to be clearly Rondell. Oh, yeah. And that could be a tweet on, uh, on uh, Bride. Yeah, Trey McBride. Blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not I like Tyquan here. I I think there's a huge fall off at at receiver after Tyquan. I like yeah. I like Claypool. You've got Tim Patrick late if you wanted to stack. I don't hate Marvin Jones either. Claypool is <laughs> interesting. He's definitely interesting with like what would we project his. His, what's his outlook in the red zone, right? That's what I want to know. Do they make him into a more like shifty gadget player? Because that could be interesting. Could um, be very interesting. Is Moody injured? Could be interesting. Maybe. <laughs> Mike <laughs> Clay. Mike Clay projects Chase Claypool to score more points than Moody this year. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Like when Mike Clay says that. You got to listen a little bit closer. And so I like evaluate, reevaluated my, my projections there, but I still came out with Mooney ahead, but it's, well, let me let thoughts, me thoughts on Knox or mayor. Uh, probably like Knox. Did. Cause I think probably he still has a, a red lot zone of two tight sets. Yeah. I I'm comfortable with these. We could have gone like likely late. I think I want to go a running back in that range. We just need one more RB. And one more receiver. 
we were talking about late round guys for running backs and just flyers and the way you should be drafting these players, just adding them to rosters that already have players with certain roles. Yes. The way you're going to increase your upside for these lineups that we're drafting so early in the off season. Um, so there's, there's a couple of these guys. Are you on the tight Chandler or Dwayne McBride bandwagon one or the other, or do you have no strong preference? Pat, this is a loaded question. I know. We're waiting. <laughs> it's Dwayne McBride, no matter what, baby. Yeah. Dwayne McBride, no matter what. That's my boy. That Let's is go. my boy, Dwayne Let's McBride. Uh, I've been on the Dwayne McBride train since the beginning. Look, I don't hate Ty Chandler, but there are just so mm. many red flags with him. He's 25 years old already. He's was drafted by the previous regime, and he hasn't done anything for Minnesota in the years that he's been there. So give me the guy who's just been drafted by the Vikings, was number one in his draft class in yards after contact per attempt. He was top five in PFF rushing grade. And the only flaw, okay, there are two flaws with Dwayne, Dwayne McBride. One is he doesn't get catch passes. Two is he fumbled a lot mm-hmm. last year. Fine, you can teach guys how to not fumble at the NFL level. And he doesn't need to catch passes because guess what? Minnesota's going to throw the ball 65% of the time. Just and it's round half point and pound, PPR. baby. It's half round point and PPR. Pound. Yeah, goal line option. It's... Let's go Dwayne McBride, baby. I like it. I like it. I think he's going to be a mega riser too. Once we get the news that Cook's moving on, you likely have to put Dwayne McBride in like the fifteenth round. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah. Dalvin, Dalvin wasn't good last year. No, they also were what sixth in rushing attempts. Like they clearly, and we saw like the writing was on the wall when they brought in the new OC that they were going to go more pass heavy. I mean. Justin Jefferson tweeted it out to everybody. Like the writing was literally on the Twitter wall. Um, so it shouldn't have been too much of a surprise, but it did catch people. Um, but yeah, like you said, it's half point PPR, 18th round pick. Like he scores a few times, or if he has even a single game, that's a good spike week. It only has to work once for you to be right. Right. Look at Pat. Pat Corain's lineup, it only had to be right once, just and it one. was. Just once. It's the one team he drafted Taekwon Thornton on. So, uh, Paul, in the comments, Paul, I I was inverted. Um, yeah, good friend. Uh, follow him on Twitter. Um, he asked, did McBride do any athletic testing? And he did not do any athletic testing because he was dealing with some low-key injury, and I think that's why you fell. He was projected to be like a fourth round, maybe fifth round running back, but he fell to the seventh round because of the lack of testing. But Pat, if you're looking at like another late, late running back that not a lot of people are drafting, well, maybe I don't remember the ADP is offhand. Malik Davis. Uh, <laughs> Malik Davis. Sure. I don't hate that pick at all. Who else have we got? Chris Rodriguez. Oh my God. We're digging Washington. deep. Washington. Chris Rodriguez of Washington going undrafted in most spots. We know Brian Robinson dealt with injuries even in the second mm. half of the season. Gibson we know had Antonio the issue. Gibson. Well, not only that, but Gibson also has the soft tissue issues that will continue to creep up. And Chris mm. Rodriguez was a top PFF graded rusher. Yards after contact per attempt was not quite Dwayne McBride, but was decent. And uh, you know, he was a good rusher at Kentucky and he had a higher draft capital than Dwayne McBride. So mm-hmm. Chris Rodriguez is a speculative running back to sprinkle into your drafts is what I'm saying. I like it. Now, if we get positive news about um, Rodriguez, how much would he rise or see someone that we can just wait, afford to wait on that real quick. We're up right now. I'm, I'm cool with Terrace Marshall here. Um, there is no number one yet in Carolina. I mean, fine. That's... You know, like at this point, you, it's Adam Thielen, but I don't believe Thielen's very good anymore. And at least Terrace Marshall has a pulse. <laughs> Love that. That's just, that's all I need. <laughs> that's all I need. <laughs> but, but yeah, how, like, can we afford to wait on a little bit of news before we're drafting players that, I mean, that's that could even go for Dwayne McBride, but Dwayne McBride, I think, has it in his range of outcomes to be a riser at a quicker pace. 
rather than Rodriguez. It's like, okay, is he getting any reps with the first team offense? Is I don't think that matters because if we're playing for week 17, if we're optimizing for that, you know, mm-hmm. these guys are going to be the starters. Brian Robinson, it's going to be Antonio Gibson. But we're fast forwarding. They play the running back position. They're going to miss weeks. And what is oh, the yeah. chance that they oh, miss yeah. one of them misses a week during the course of the fantasy playoffs that it's not zero. It's pretty significant. It's, it's not zero. If if you had to pick one like Zach, do you like Zach Evans playing behind Cam Akers where we had Cam Akers sent home for two weeks last year? Um, the un- It's unknown still for that number two spot. And there's so many running backs like this right now where it's, it's unknown. Um, Kyron I just Williams didn't like Evans as a prospect. Mm-hmm. I didn't like him as a prospect. He just underwhelmed me in a lot of, um, in a lot of ways. And uh, the landing spot is a, is fine for like mm-hmm. a handcuff role. Cause I don't think Kyron Williams is particularly good either. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe Zach Evans is the shiny new toy, but eh, I'm, yeah, I don't view him as yeah, someone I'm going after. But as a number, a potential number two, it's like we have a list of these players where there is still unknown. This contest is going to fill in a few days. Rodriguez yeah. is one of your favorites. I mean, we have Gus Edwards who goes Ooh, love after Gus these, Edwards. who goes after these players and should have a certain role. Another year removed from injury. Uh, I think that's. I, I have Gus Edwards at a twenty nine percent rush share. Like. The That's 159 huge. rush attempts. I think they're mm-hmm. going to split it uh, pretty, not evenly, like favor is going to be JK, but right. Gus Edwards is getting forgotten and he still had five yards per carry last year and had a couple nice spike weeks. And if JK mm-hmm. Dobbins goes down, guess what? We've seen Gus Edwards be a solid running back two for fantasy with right. low end running back one. Right. He's not going to catch many balls, but he doesn't need to catch many balls in half point PPR on a team that is still, in my opinion, run first or run heavy, we could say. Uh, Lamar said the the plan is to pass more, run less, but that's for him, not for his running backs. Right. So I, I love Gus in this range. Again, you're drafting players with certain roles, but if you need – and I think he actually has upside too, so it's very interesting. And this is a – I think this is an interesting pick. Uh, definitely a draft winner that's not being drafted a lot, but again – just one of these players that's fighting for a number two role and everyone's trying to find that guy right now. And there's so many people swinging and missing us included (laughs) while we're trying to do that. It's it's just funny though. Like if Dwayne McBride misses, this team still has a chance though. That's the whole point. Like give yourself a chance. Don't draft three speculative guys and you only have, you know, (laughs) one returning guy. It's, it's the way you draft that you can put yourself in a good situation while still adding upside. For sure. Well, how would you grade this team here, Pat? Uh, I'm not going to like this one. Where did we draft from? We drafted from the 11th, the 11th spot. spot. So I like to go elite, elite wide receiver. My teams, I think, look a lot better that way. Uh, but Eckler, Dobbins, I think the white pick's probably the mistake. Or... Robinson was the auto pick. So, I mean, I guess you could say that was the mistake. We could have stopped at two tight ends, could have afforded us yeah. to get another receiver. Um, but super strong at running back, probably too strong. QBs, I'm fine with. We get Lamar a little bit after ADP. Tight ends, I think, are very strong. We get them all after ADP. And then the wide receiver room, Adams, Judy, Evans. Again, these are going to be spike week guys. And yeah, that's why I don't mind just keep adding these receivers on even though we only had four receivers through jesus how many rounds i hate when this happens and sometimes you just get stuck because you're trying to go best player available you don't want to pick you know, juju wasn't even there at 107 like lazard at 108 i think Ew. majoko is our first tight end is going to provide way better value uh, at this spot so i don't want to force these receivers that i don't think are very good into the lineup. I mean, it's an interesting, uh, maybe we could have considered Odo Beckham there. Yeah, we definitely could have. And maybe that's the speculative, you know, wide receiver that needs to hit, but it's, this was the auto pick. It's fine. Should have been yeah. Friar I think we stopped at two tight ends there. We go yeah. Brian Robinson. 
and then we don't pick another running back until we uh, round 17. So the mistake happened. We still moved around it in the appropriate fashion. We didn't continue to draft running backs. That's where the mistake would be. But we add in Gallup. So we had four receivers through 10 rounds, which I hate. I it's absolutely a, it hate It feels that. a little skimp. But we go yeah. Gallup. We go Shahid. We go Tyquan Thornton. These are all spike week guys. We go Terrace Marshall, who... I mean, it's it's going to be... He probably has a higher year. floor than your Thornton's and your... Uh, probably yeah. your... Yeah, he has a higher yeah. floor than Thornton. Yeah, maybe Shahid, I'd, but I'd agree with we'll that. See. Yeah, Shahid's just that A dot guy, the high A dot, average step the target, um, spike weak guy. And I don't mind if I have these players that go for three points, you know, one catch for 20 yards or one catch for 25 yards. And then one week they have a 17 point week game. Um, when you have multiple of those players, you're just basically hoping that they're offsetting each other on, yeah. uh, on opposite weeks, right? And we still have a decent base with Adams, Judy. It's basically it, though. Mike Evans can legit put up zeros. We've seen it multiple times, multiple years, but somehow he still reaches a thousand yards. So I think that's that's funny. But again, he's a spike week guy. So I would I'd probably give this one a C plus. I think it was. I think the balance of it is is good, but it didn't end up the way that I wanted. Now we have the correlation, which is good. It's just, I'm not going to feel good with four receivers through 10 rounds. Yeah. That's, that's a tough spot. The, the team structure, um, you know, it, it hurts there, but I think, you know, your player takes, I like the Jackson Wilson. I like the Eckler Dobbins picks, you know, you've got, I'm not a huge Adams guy this year, but I still think regardless of his quarterback, he's going to produce some things. I love the Judy pick there. Evans is fine at the, as your wide receivers, three spike mm. week type of guy. Tyke one Thornton also, you know, offers the spike weeks. Um, and okay. then I don't, I don't hate the Njoku pick. I, I like Njoku um, and Dolchich as well and Knox. So I feel like you've got some strong tight ends. Uh, yeah, I think the wide receivers are hurting your team structure there. Your stacking is is pretty strong. Um, there were some player takes that I, I liked there. And your Week 17 correlation, right? <laughs> we've got, it's always we've got there. the stack that exists. So I would agree with you. You know, probably C plus B minus range um, is, is about where I would grade this. Yeah. Pick 11. It can get gross. I, I also think if this is Ayuk, I like the team a whole lot more. Which is so mm. weird. It, it's so Ayuk weird. didn't hit almost any spike weeks last year. Like he was disappointing. I know, but you have to think that some of that was just you had CMC come into the offense like halfway through. You had different QBs playing. Um, <laughs> how many QBs did he play with last season? Three. So it's. I think he's going to benefit from a full off season, and it's funny because we actually don't know who the QB is this year, but. uh yeah, I think he'll benefit. Uh, where is it? Four point eight percent top five rate, one point six percent top five rate over the last three years for Brandon Ayuk. So it's that he finished once in the top five last season. Uh, yeah, I think that's about right. But his flex rate last year was only twenty six percent, so his floor was really mm -hmm. scary, even though he mm -hmm. had a decent ceiling. Mm -hmm. All right, and that's that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for ceiling plays, um, especially in this range where it's like after. So who do we pick instead of? So we went with J.K. Dobbins for the correlation with Lamar. If I look back, I would probably go Ayuk and then one of these receivers. But again, this is all after after it happens. Right? All hindsight, like. If I knew yeah. Rashad White was coming back around to us or we could have got Connor, one of those two, and then pair it with either Zay Flowers and Bateman and still get that correlation with Lamar. I like that, but I am like you, I'm in on J.K. Dobbins. Like I, I like him for that value, but maybe just in the back of the head, when we start Eckler, uh three running backs through nine rounds yeah three i was not a seven i'm not a rashad much. white guy who would have who went off around there that we could have considered instead of rashad white uh so it would have been zay flowers to stack Bateman, maybe 
or Waller. Like we could have gone, but again, we got Njoku mm-hmm. five picks after ADP, so it still was fine here. It's just all these guys go off in this range. Yeah, that's tough. Like situation, not getting Deontay no Johnson what. there hurt. Yeah. Oh, I agree. This would have been a good roster for, uh, for Deontay Johnson. I, I think just he's going to be our wide receiver. What four? And that's yeah. exactly what we were talking about. I'm fine with him as a wide receiver four. I don't like Johnson as wide receiver five on the team. That's where we're going Pickens. But yeah, pick 11 can be tough. You sort of have to play the board of what they give you. Yeah. But uh, it's just one of those learning lessons. And again, this, this is a $7, $7 lineup. If we look at some of these other teams, I bet we have, I mean, this is already an 11 person draft. Two out of 11 are moving on because Meek going double elite QB paid the rake. Um, we can peek real quick. Three, five, seven, three. Too much, eh, maybe not too much. We'll, we'll see. He gets he gets Staffy at one ninety one, which is ridiculous. I mean, you can't pass up Stafford at that point. Tight and ends, I think. This, I love. I it. think tight ends are super weak here. Uh, at least it's correlated with Cincy. But yeah, the Zach Ertz one scares me. Yeah, uh, wide receivers better be strong, and maybe running backs. Tyler, but... Running backs are fine. But I think this team's not finishing in the top two. ER seven's a pounder, so expecting a pretty good team from ER seven. Always, I'm cool with these QBs. Uh, he gets Kirk twenty picks after ADP. Beautiful. <sighs> Kittle and Ferguson, I'm fine with that. Uh, with Dak as well. Yep. Running running backs are good. I like Tank. Nine picks after. That checks I out. Like tank. And receivers check out. So ER seven definitely has a chance. Batch nine. Gino and Will Levis, probably not. He's got seven running backs, so another one that paid the rake. Probably was... And four tight ends, seven running backs yeah. and four tight ends. Right. Five wide receivers. <laughs> right. right. It's it's a new one. It's a new one. We'll have to see what the advance rate through the playoffs or BBM is for that. It might be a new thing. Uh, Hurts and Bryce Young, I'm cool with this. 20 picks after ADP. 10 picks after ADP on Hurts. Wow. Uh, Ingram and Komet might be a little light, but if they both have good seasons, um, I don't mind that. I don't I'm mind cool it. With it. Yeah. It's kind of like speculative Chubb Walker, Swift, Alexander Madison and Zeke. I don't oh. like to pick 19 picks early. I don't. Uh, yeah. I don't like the ADP region. It was I don't really mind him, how he fits with that team. Okay. That's fair. If you can find like a red zone roll pop in the end zone once every three games. Yeah. Just the reach was no, no. Yeah. Diggs, Williams, Quentin Johnson, Myers, Mingo, Hodgins. I, relatively weak at wide receiver, but he has nine of them. Um, I think it's. I think it's definitely. I don't know if there's the enough side. firepower. Maybe, maybe that's a maybe. Farashi with the three six seven two. Kelsey and Juwan Johnson. I like that pairing. QBs. I'm. Yeah. I'm cool with it. I'm hoping that he has some San Fran players though. Penny Harris. Gibson, Herbert, I'm fine. I'm fine with this group. This is a zero RB squad. His first running backs, Penny, uh, brings it back with Harris and Gibson. I'm cool with this. I'm cool with this group. It's just, it's a zero RB team, so his wide receiver should be pretty nuts. Olave, Debo, Kirk, Pittman, Jordan Not Addison, as nuts John as Dotson. I expected, though. Yeah, it's because of the Kelsey start. Yeah. It's because of the Kelsey start. So if he wins tight end... If he's above average in wide receiver, which he sh- this looks above average. Uh, look how many receivers he had by pick 79. Um, it's it tough. It probably depends on Anthony Richardson, to be honest, if he could be a, a QB. Uh, it was uh, Derek Carr, 30 spots after ADP. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, yeah there we really go. Nice value. Really nice value. And he, he even pairs it up too with the double. So it's. Oh. It's a nice he fell squad. into a 30 spot ADP yeah. drop stack. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. He, he Double knew points. He knew it was going to happen. Goff, love and Stroud, probably a little light with the upside on this team, but I don't hate the Jared Goff one. If he stacks with Detroit. Yeah. We see Waller and Laporta. Very cool. I'm cool with that. Double eight picks after. It might be a little light, but we'll see. I think Sam Laporte actually has a pretty good chance to work out a role while uh, JMO's JMO's out. Najee, Miles Sanders, David Montgomery, P. Ryan, and Tajay Spears. I'm fine with this group. I'm fine with this group. I think he spent enough draft capital at running back. 
Um, Samaj P. Ryan. A bunch of mad provide. running backs, though. Yeah. P. Like, Ryan. literally, Matt Sanders, David Montgomery, Samaj needs- P. Ryan. Like, literally, True. Matt. <laughs> he needs he needs an injury to Javante Williams at the end of the season, basically, because P. Ryan, he's going to be that handcuff guy at the end of the season. I expect him to have a fiery start, though. Lamb, Amon Ra, Hopkins, Lockett, Juju, Romeo Dobbs, Kloshaker, Nathaniel Dell. I don't think you need a Dell here. I don't think Dell does a lot. Who doesn't need a Dell? For this team. I don't think he does a lot for this team. I'd probably rather a tight end. Um, where we're picking in that range, tight end seems to have better value. And a third Maybe tight end. Maybe a Tyler probably. Conklin, you know. Yeah, exactly. A hundred percent. Or even Hunter Henry. Oh, yes. All the <laughs> now now we're talking dirty. Let's go. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, Bradley, do you have anything for the people in the chat? Yeah, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Make sure you're hitting that subscribe button here for Fancy Dog Pound. Subscribe. Let's go. Don't just like it. Don't just like it. Like, but like if it you too. are liking it but not subscribed, <laughs> what are you doing? Come on, subscribe. <laughs> Don't be a coward. Let's do it. <laughs> Make sure you're following Bradley over at Best Bell Fantasy Football on YouTube, FF Staldler on the Twitter machine, and I'm sure we'll be going at it again later this summer. Appreciate you coming on. Oh, absolutely. Thanks for inviting me, Pat. Hell yeah. Hope everyone has a good night. Pounders.